Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks, and this is the follow-up to our iPhone 15 Pro Max unboxing. Today we're going to set the device up. So I'm going to go through putting my SIM card into the device and then setting it up the way I use an iPhone. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. We cover consumer electronics, gadgets, accessories, fashion, and anything we think makes the travel experience better. Anyway, first things first, when you're looking at the screen of your iPhone, on the left-hand side, if you're in Europe, you'll have a SIM tray with a little pokey hole where you get your SIM ejector tool, pop it in, and it opens up a little drawer. Now, I said if you're in Europe and probably the rest of the world, because in the US, the fruity people at Apple have decided to take that feature away from you you have to use eSIMs from now on, which is a bit of a bummer, especially if you're someone who travels and wants to have, uh, have the option to swap SIM cards in and out. Great, so now that's done, I'm going to long press the power button on the right hand side and switch on the device. We're immediately presented with the fruity Apple logo in white on the black background, just showing off that lovely OLED display so that you get uh, some decent uh, understanding of it. And now it's turned into color and you get to see that dynamic island which replaces the static peninsula of old. We already saw this in the iPhone 14 Pro last year, uh, which I'm going to be resetting soon. Uh, but this year they've thinned out the bezels a bit and we're, welcome, we're on the welcome screen. Now, first impressions holding the phone is that the screen is slightly rounded at the edges. It's not sharp as it used to be. And that titanium alloy frame is uh, slightly rounded. So it's much more ergonomically pleasant to hold. Great, let's get started. So we've got the Hello screen on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. What do we need to do here? There's a hula. So we've got information on the device itself. What do I need to do? Oh, here we go, swipe up. I'm going to choose English, United Kingdom. Uh, just for your information, I did put in a UK SIM card because that's where I currently am and where I live. And for the foreseeable future, that SIM card will be in the device. Choose the size of text and icons on the phone. I'm going to keep it default uh, to go through the standard experience. Um, it's then suggesting we do a quick start. I do not want to transfer my data from another device. I really want to set this up as a new fresh device and make it my own. Next up, I need to choose my Wi-Fi network and connect. It'll just be a moment. Great, so that should be my password input. Um, first impressions is the screen is nice and easy to type on. No, no particular uh, issues there. Now we just need for, we need the fruity company, Apple, to activate my iPhone. Because you don't need to just be able to set up your phone, you need to ask for permission. Great. First up, we need to do a software update. It's suggesting we do that now, so I'll set that up. We need to agree to the terms and conditions. We don't really trust Apple, but I'm just out of, of, of convenience. I'm just going to speed things up here. Uh, let's call it a sacrifice in view of creating a YouTube video that people don't just drop out of. Now, it's going to download the software update over my super fast internet connection and hopefully install relatively quickly. Okay then, and we're now finally installing the software update on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. That was quite a lengthy five to seven minutes uh, download of the update. So it must be quite a beefy one. Okay, so an usual Apple update screen, which takes absolutely ages. It's one of the things you start to appreciate about uh, the Android operating system after a while, uh, when you start using iOS, is how relatively quickly updates happen because of the fact they happen in the background and you can carry on using your smartphone. In this case, it's going to be a decent 10 minute wait whilst it all happens on the iPhone 15 Pro. 
Excellent, and we're finally back. That was another six, seven minutes, which was painful. Anyway, we're back to appearance. We're going to keep the default one. We're going to set up the device without transferring data from another one. We'll have to accept the, the whole uh, privacy thing as we did earlier. And so I'm setting this device up for myself. This is similar to what Google does in uh, Google Open Handset Alliance devices, where they have Google services on them. You can set them up for a child. Now, next up, we're going to have to set up Face ID. So it gives you the quick instructions to position your face in the camera frame, then move your head in a circle to show all the angles of your face. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to move my face down a little. Okay, so first face ID scan is done. Um, I'm going to skip the face ID with a mask option. Uh, that is something that is going to be quite useful when traveling, but I'll set that one up later. I don't happen to have a, I don't happen to have a face mask on me at the moment. So next I'll set up a quick passcode. Great, so that should be the passcode set up. I don't want to transfer these devices. I want to set up as a fresh device. And next I'll need to log in with my Apple ID. Now, next up, there's some sort of two-factor authentication where I need to have a verification uh, sent to another iOS device. Now, I'm having that sent to my uh, iPhone 14 Pro, which I have here, and I've been sent a two-factor authentication code, which by the time this uh, video is published will be completely invalid. Now it's got my uh, iCloud's Apple account details up, usual terms and conditions. And as you can see, it's signing me in. This is my disapproving Apple face selfie, which I have used on multiple devices, including the Apple MacBook Air 15 with an M2 chip. So what I've done is uh, all, all set up that device and uh, I'll be working with the iPhone 15 uh, Pro Max in tandem with the MacBook Air 15. Anyway, am I going to set up Apple Pay? Unlikely. I'll set that up. Say I'm going to set it up later. Siri, I don't want to have that running. I'm going to set that up later in settings. It just sucks when compared to Google Assistant. Google Assistant sometimes isn't great, but all in all, it's much more useful than, than the Apple service. So iPhone analytics, oh, I'm really a, a privacy nut. I'm not going to share my data with Apple. Oh wait, I already do in many ways, but never mind. And silent mode is now toggled uh, in the control center. The traditional toggle has been replaced by an action button, which is now programmable. Uh, to give you some context, this is the iPhone 14 Pro you can see it has a little switch with color, whereas here it's now a button. And here we have a quick tutorial about the action button. Press and hold to turn silent mode on and off. So press and hold and it goes off. You can also customize the action button to open camera, turn on torch or access a favorite phone iPhone feature. So let's customize that. What am I going to do? Am I going to use silent mode? Well, my phone's pretty much always on silent, so that will stay on. Am I going to focus mode? I think I'm actually going to use this for the camera. There is also the option for the torch, voice memo, magnifier, shortcuts, accessibility, or no action at all. I'm actually going to use this for the camera. This is the main reason I purchased the iPhone 15 Pro Max was for uh, that. Now I'm going to approve the whole emergency crash SOS stuff. Um, I'm not a big believer in it at the moment, but uh, apparently it works for some people, but it, apparently it's also caused a lot of problems to emergency services, for example, near ski slopes, where lots of erroneous readings of uh, emergencies were read. Anyway, welcome to iPhone. Swipe up to get started. Great, so this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, 
with its lovely OLED display as it comes out of the box. So everything Apple, and I suppose for a lot of people, that's what they want. But I'm a bit of a, a, a Google nut. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go to the store, to the Apple App Store, and it's wanting personalized apps. Do I want personalized ads? No. Allow App Store to use your approximate location. No, don't allow. Don't want notifications. This is almost as bad as using a website in Europe. Apple just constantly bombarding you with requests about permissions and doing stuff. Anyway, we're here. I'm going to go into uh, the apps. And the first thing I'm going to do is search for Google. Google is my favorite internet service provider in terms of uh, apps and services. So we're going to download Google Search, Google Chrome, the web browser. And you'll notice that I don't need to enter a password or approve this because I've done this before on multiple iOS devices. Google Photos, fantastic service, which I will continue to use. Google Maps, Google Drive, I am a very happy Google One subscriber. Uh, I get lots of benefit from that. Gmail, fantastic. Google Translate, very useful. Google Docs. Google Calendar. We're already getting Gmail. Google Home for home automation. Google Earth, fantastic app, I really enjoy. Google Earth, Google Sheets, just in case I need to do spreadsheets on the go, Google Meet for video calls, YouTube, obviously you're watching this video on YouTube, um, you know that I not only create content on YouTube, but also I'm an avid YouTube viewer. And again, thanks for watching if you made it this far into this video. Google Slides, now Google One to manage my account. I not sure if this offers a VPN service uh, as it does on Android, but we'll find out soon, the Google Assistant. So hopefully we can replace Siri, who's an absolute pain in the neck sometimes. Uh, don't need Google Classroom, Google Chat, uh, which formerly replaces, formerly replaces Hangouts for me. So everyone I speak to on Hangouts is now in Google Chat. Google Tasks, my task list manager. Google Keep for notes and lists. Google Authenticator, I actually use the Microsoft one for that. Google News, yes. Gboard, now this replaces the iOS keyboard and brings in a whole host of extra features that are very useful. Google Music, as with YouTube, I am a YouTube premium subscriber that includes Google Music uh, or YouTube Music, so I'm very happy with that. I just had a little slip of the tongue there and said Google Music because that's how old I am. When I first subscribed to their service, it was uh, Google Music, and I still, in a web browser, type music.google.com to be taken to YouTube Music. Um, I don't need Firefox. Uh, Google Opinion New Rewards, I'd love. Great app to get free Google credit, which I use uh, for in-app purchases sometimes. Uh, I don't need Google TV. Google Fit, Google Podcasts, Google Cloud. Okay, I think we've got everything now. Yeah, got everything, great. So that's Google sorted. Next up, let's go, go and get all the apps from Amazon. Now Amazon, I'm a very happy Amazon Prime subscriber. So I'm going to install the Amazon Shopping app, Amazon Prime Video where you can watch excellent shows like Good Omens, um, like The Grand Tour and others. Amazon Music, great service that has free uh, streaming of music uh, for Amazon Prime subscribers. Sometimes I, I just like the, the stations that come up on Amazon Music. Um, I'm going to resist putting uh, the, the A word, uh, the Amazon Digital Assistant on this device because I think one functioning ones such as Google Assistant is more than enough. Amazon Photos, definitely. This is a free photo storage service if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. 
Great, so we've got that. Uh, it's then now suggesting a few other apps. Amazon Fire TV, definitely useful if you can't be bothered finding your remote control to your Fire TV devices. And now the key one, Amazon's Audible service, audiobooks. I, I, I really do like that service. Very happy customer. Also Kindle, handle, handy for reading content sometimes. And I think we've exhausted the list of Amazon apps. Okay, so we've done all those. Next up, I'm going to install all the Meta apps. So we search for Meta. And obviously we have the Facebook. Reddit, I still use that. TikTok, I use that. LinkedIn, I'm going to not install that on my device. I am going to install Instagram. Oh look, there's X, I'm not gonna install that. Threads, that's pretty much replaced. What used to be Twitter is now uh, X for me. WhatsApp, I'm not going to install because my main WhatsApp number is in my other device. I occasionally do use Skype. Now I have a Microsoft 365 subscription, which includes international calls on Skype. And that's one of the reasons I am going to install that. Also, Facebook Messenger, also known as Messenger from Meta. Tumblr occasionally has, still has some good content. Follow, I follow uh, companies like NASA uh, who still do excellent Tumblr posts. Discord, very handy for club twit. Um, it is the Discord channel that I use the most. Uh, and if you don't already, check out uh, the Twit YouTube channel and their website, twit.tv. Great content for tech geeks and, in, and tech enthusiasts. Great, so I think we've covered all the meta apps. Next up, uh, messaging. Telegram is important to me. It's great because I can message from multiple devices without losing threads. There's no limitations to that. Uh, and a few other things. I'm going to go and get the Adobe suite of apps because I'm going to be using the iPhone 15 Pro Max to go and uh, I'm going to be using the iPhone 15 Pro Max to create content on the go. My aim is to have set up a, a workflow so that I can do things such as create YouTube shorts on the go with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Um, I'll be doing a comparison, how do, does uh, creating content on the iPhone 15 Pro Max with the Adobe Suite compare to creating content on the Google Pixel 8 Pro when it's released later this year. So you can see I'm installing, um, in this case, I'm installing Photoshop, Adobe Capture, Adobe Aero. I haven't installed this one before, but I hear good things of it. Um, yeah, so that's great. I've got all the Adobe stuff pretty much set up. Excellent. So we've got a bunch of apps now installing. What I do need to do next is either uninstall or hide away other apps. So just like Android has had for years, now you can swipe left on, on the iPhone and have some quick things here. I'm not too interested in Apple News. Um, I don't want to try the three month free trial. If Apple uses for you, go ahead. So I'm going to remove that widget because I'm not going to use it. Um, it would be nice to be able to put Google News in there. Um, I don't know if that's an option. Edit plus um, podcasts. It's only Apple. It only seems to be Apple stuff. Uh, e, F, G. Oh yeah, here we go. Google News. So we'll add that widget in there. Cool. So we'll leave that as it is. Um, there will be some customization needed in the future. But let's go back to the home screen. So what I'm going to do is put all the Apple crap into a folder. So podcasts can go into the same folder as uh, that one, put 
Musing. Apple Notes. Apple Mail. Apple Health. Wallet. Apple Maps. Apple Calendar. I think that's enough for now. Um, I'm going to remove the calendar widget. Keep the weather one for now. Now, oh right, I forgot. I'm going to put the Safari browser and Apple Music into the same folder. And whilst I'm at it, I'll put the iTunes store in. Look at me cleaning up this mess of a place. Apple Fitness. I might as well just move this folder over to the right, pop it here, and put all the Apple stuff in here. Don't need number. Actually, can we install numbers? Delete app. Do I need pages? No, delete app. This will free up a load of space. I'll keep iMovie and GarageBand because I want those. I don't need the Apple Store app. I don't need Apple Freeform, but I'll keep it because I need to spend some more time with it. Uh, what else? Apple Stocks, don't need that. Apple Watch, don't need that. So this video is pretty much just me going, I don't need Apple Books, I've got the Kindle app. Don't need Apple Home, delete that. Don't need Keynote, delete app. We're getting there, we're getting there. And now we've got all the apps that I installed going through this process. So great, we're, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. So next up, we'll put the Google app on the home screen. Need that. Now, next up, I'm going to create a folder with all my social apps. So we'll start with, in this case, Reddit, can go into the same place as Facebook and I'm going to rename this social. I'll put TikTok in there as well, Instagram in there, threads, Tumblr, and I actually treat Discord more of a chat app. So we'll leave things as they are now. So social can go into my dock at the bottom. Uh, what I will also need is the camera app, app. Where's the camera app? Here we go. So I do have that on the right hand side. And then I'm going to pop messaging onto the home screen for a moment. Whilst I put all the messaging apps into a folder. So I'm going to put Skype, which I treat sometimes as a calling message, uh, calling app, but mostly as a, as a, messaging app, Messenger, Telegram, and I'll need to install WeChat as well now, come to think of it. We'll put Discord in as well. So this is classed as social networking by Apple, but that just shows you what they call it. So I'm going to call this one Messaging. Great. So this is my messaging folder. Let's just reorganize the apps in here in terms of importance to me. And drag that down into the dock. So my dock consists of my calling for the few times I actually make a phone call, my messaging apps, my social apps. And now that we've got this mostly done, uh, let's move stuff to the main home screen. Uh, we have YouTube gets its own dedicated space on the screen because it's one of my most used apps. And music wise, um, if I were to use music here, I will need to move this here, put Amazon music on top of it. That way I have my music folder. 
great. And next up, I will take the Office apps or the Google Suite apps. So Docs, so Sheets and Docs and Slides all go in one folder. And actually I've got Google Chat can go into the folder there on messaging. Uh, next up, I'll need to move Gmail onto the home screen, usually bottom right for me. Calendar is usually to the left of Gmail. Oh, we'll, we'll need to put Chrome there as well because that's my preferred web browser. Meet is classed as a calling app. So that can go in there. Google News will pop that onto the home screen. You'll notice a, a trend here. I am essentially putting all my Google apps and the most used apps on the home screen. Great. And obviously Google Maps and F Google Photos are my two most used apps here. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm also going to create a separate Photos uh, folder for things like Amazon Photos, Photoshop, and Lightroom. and pop Fresco in as well, and Photoshop Camera, and Adobe Capture. That's all classed as photos for me. And I'm going to keep Adobe Express and Premiere Rush and pop them on the main screen. So Adobe Express and Premiere Rush are mainly for editing and creating video. They're great for templating uh, quick YouTube shorts, Instagram reels and stories, and any other short form video in whatever format you're after. So good start. We've got uh, a lot of stuff done here. I now need to sign into my accounts and start messing around with stuff. So bear with me as I sign into Google. Okay then, so that should be be me signed into uh, to Gmail, and as a result, I should be signed into all the other Google apps. So if I go in here, um, we're going to give access to the full thing to there. I'm going to enable my Google account. So it's setting up and syncing my calendar. Google News should do the same. You'll see that my little avatar on Google is up there on the top right. So I have the Google News set up. This should also populate the widget for Google News so that it's there. So I'm going to delete widgets I don't need. Tips widget. I'll keep the battery one. I'll keep, remove the maps one, the calendar one. That's slightly better. Great, so we've got that widget drawer sorted. I think we've got most things set up here, so I'm quite happy with my setup now. So next things next, I will need to start living with the Apple iPhone 15 Pro. That will likely involve a significant amount of tweaking of my settings and uh, overall experience. Uh, what I'll do is obviously edit this video heavily. It's taken almost 40 minutes to get to this point where it's now a usable phone to me. Uh, and once that's done, uh, I will be living with it. Obviously, I will need a case for it because this lovely matte finish glass, uh, soft touch matte finish glass back is fragile. It is glass. 
Uh, so I will be covering some cases from Petaka, who have very kindly sent us a review case, a Rinke Fusion X case, which I pur purchased on Amazon. And if you'd like to see more accessories for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, please feel free to leave us a comment in the section below. And just as usual, if you would like to let me know why I'm doing everything wrong, or would like to start a flame war in the comment section, please do. Google loves that uh, for the YouTube alg algorithm, as usual. And on a nicer note, if you want to leave us uh, any questions that we can get back to you on, or any constructive criticism, please do leave us a comment in the section below. But for now, thank you for watching uh, all the way through to the, to the end of this video. And if you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. We don't just cover iPhone, uh, we cover consumer electronics, gadgets, accessories, Android smartphones, and anything we think makes the travel experience better, including fashion items. I actually have a Heb Troco video coming up uh, very soon. So be subscribed, have that notification bell on, and uh, enjoy this video and the rest of our productions. But for now, thanks from me and goodbye.